thoracic pedicle screw is important because there is slightly different anatomy. Second one is you are working around the cord. Third is there are very important structures anterior and lateral to the pedicle also. Unlike in lumbar spine where uh, lateral penetration is not a big issue here, you may injure some vital organs. So the most important uh, issue in uh, uh, thoracic pedicle screw is the anatomical consideration. As uh, uh, Vikas had told us, after exposure, you have to have this an open uh, thoracic pedicle screw. You have to consider four important anatomical issues. One is a transverse pedicle angle, that is, the angle between the uh, between the entry point and into the body, the transverse width, which is this uh, point between D and E, that is the width of the pedicle, the cord length, which is A and C, which is entry point to the tip of uh, the screw length, or the second thing is the screw length, starting point and the insertion techniques. These are the considerations we we'll have while doing uh, thoracic pedicle screw. The entry point and other things are slightly different from uh, lumbar pedicle screw. So the, the as we as I told you, the transverse pedicle angle, which is an angle between the uh, transverse midline to the pedicle, is widest at T1 and the narrowest at T12. In fact, in T12, sometimes you can even have a negative of five degrees rather than a positive uh, angle uh, converging inward. So you should be aware of these angles when you start inserting the pedicle. So as I told you, the transverse width, uh, the second important point is transverse width, width of the pedicle so that the uh, size of screw to be inserted. So the diameter of the screw normally in adult population is 5.5 in the upper uh, thoracic spine below D9, D10, I tend to use 6.5. Uh, I do not use 4.5s even in the upper uh, thoracic spine because the uh, there is a slight uh, give way of the pedicle and then you can safely put in a 5.5 uh, screw in these. So we should be aware that the transverse width is the least at T4 and the widest at T12. As we go up from T4, T3, T2 and T1 are wider and easier to insert and the angle of insertion is much wider, that's nearly 25 degrees. The thoracic pedicle screw uh, fixation techniques is, there are two uh, techniques. One is an anatomical uh, insertion technique described by C also cut all. And then the uh, direct insertion technique described by Lenke et al. In the sagittal plane, if you see the angle of insertion from T1 to T12 increases from 10 degrees to 15 degrees. That is a cephalocaudal angle or a superior inferior angle of 10 degrees to 15 degrees as described by Professor J. Swall's paper in 2004. And uh, in the in the uh, European population, it, they have described it as 12 degrees to 16 degrees, as seen in this paper from Zendrik et al. There are two techniques uh, of uh, insertion. One is a freehand technique. The second one will be image guidance. That will be like lateral and uh, uh, anterior fluoroscopy. The freehand technique uh, requires meticulous exposure. We require cortical bursts and pedicle palpation seekers. So these are the uh, important entry points as we have marked uh, in from in this picture, as you can see from T1 to T7. And then the point moves slightly inferior and slightly medial from T8 to T12. The point is in the upper end of the uh, transverse process where the transverse process meets the lamina from T1 to T7. Uh, where the superior facet, transverse process, and the lamina meet, and from T8 to T12, it is in the it's slightly to the inferior to that point and medially placed. Uh, in, in the exposure in an open uh, thoracic pedicle screw should be to uh, expose till the uh, tip of transverse process. Remove the inferior facet if we are going to do a fusion. If you're not going to do fusion, you don't have to remove the inferior facet. And scrape out the cartilage on the superior uh, facet to, if you're doing fusion. Use a cartical burr, uh, a small two millimeter burr to uh, start the starting point. It can be, you can uh, see in this, where the, uh, in this picture, where the starting point is. It's the junction between, as I said, T1, T2, junction between bisector transverse process and lamina. Then to, uh, in the mid thoracic, that is T7 and T9, it should be more medial starting point, junction between the proximal edge 
of the transfer process in the lamina and where the lamina meets the superior facet. In the lower thoracic, it's junction, the, it's uh, T9, 10, T11, and 12. It's a, a junction between the bisected transverse process and the lamina and slightly medially placed. So uh, the most uh, commonly used technique is a gear shifting uh, uh, technique as described by Lenke. I think it was previously described by C also. CL, C also uses a uh, drill, hand drill or a mechanized drill, and then he probes the pedicle. Lenke uses gear shift technique. So the thoracic gear shift is uh, when, once you probe and see the pedicle blush, you start with this gear shift with the concave side facing the med, uh, convex side facing the medial wall so that you hit the medial wall and skive in into the pedicle. And once you're through to the pedicle, then you turn the probe medially so that the concave side faces medially now after inserting 15, 20 millimeters and then get into the pedicle. Once you're thorough, then use a feeler, uh, a thin feeler as you can see here with a ball tip. So use a flexible ball tip pedicle sound, which can probe all the walls. You should have five uh, bony endpoint. That's the anterior uh, endpoint on the vertebral body, the superior and inferior pedicle uh, walls, the medial and the lateral pedicle walls. Once you're sure of it, you can actually tap the initial part of the uh, screw. I usually use a smaller tap if I'm putting a 5.5 uh, or a 6.5. I usually use a 4.5 tap and then insert a screw. Once you tap, it is easier. You can actually repalpate using the same uh, uh, tip, the flexible uh, pedicle probes, and then you do the screw dropping. This can prevent inadvertent, this is a free hand technique, so inadvertent penetration of the medial wall, which is more dangerous because you are working near the heart. So uh, as I said, these are the few steps. So you see a pedicle blush, and then use the probe inside. Tap, usually I use a 4.5 to tap and then put a 5.5 or 6.5 screw. The more challenging uh, pedicle screws in uh, uh, thoracic spine will be in the deformed uh, scoliotic spine. It is feasible, but you should have uh, much more uh, morphometric knowledge of the scoliotic pedicles. So the pedicle orientation is totally different. The pedicles may be in a wind, uh, wind step. The problem in scoliotic spine will be the shift of dural sac towards concavity. There will be thin pedicles on the concavity. The pedicle width on concavity may be almost not there. Then you may not even have a pedicle there. No differences in pedicle length or cord length between concave and concave side. Usually, once you insert in a proper technique, the cord length, that is the uh, length of the screw, does not vary very much. So, concave pedicle is usually thinner and shorter, as I said. The spinal canal smaller on the concave side and spinal cord is shifted. So you have to be very aware to not to injure the cord. And as as now we use IONM and we use uh, IONM screw stimulations, which actually prevents all these issues. The other uh, problem is a uh, uh, wind step deformity of the pedicle screw, pedicles in the thoracic spine. Uh, it's called wind swipe, uh, described by O'Brien et al where one of the pedicle, both the pedicles are in the same direction rather than, so you actually have to insert both the screws in the same direction rather than in a converging direction. So screw fixation in some of these cases may not be possible at all because the, the length on the convex side will be much more and you will have a medial penetration whichever way you try to insert the screw. So that's a problem. You can use an out, in, out, uh, in, out, uh, in technique in such situations. So uh, the other technique of screw insertion uh, for thoracic pedicle is better guidance with a two-dimensional uh, navigation. A three-dimensional, if you have a model and, uh, and uh, uh, you can even have an interoperative CT scan with a three-dimensional uh, navigation. And in difficult uh, situations, we usually use, we study the thoracic uh, pedicle if it is very thin and if it's uncertain intraoperative pedicle or retention, you can do an open laminotomy, palpate the thoracic uh, pedicle and then insert. In uh, the most commonly other used technique is the in-out-in technique where we use the uh, uh, 
pedicle and the rib as a single unit. So the screw goes into the transverse process, enters the lateral wall of the pedicle. It goes in between the uh, rib and the pedicle as seen here. And then uh, it, it, it usually one, it, there is a wider distance of the pedicle. If the pedicle is quite narrow, you have a wider uh, width available now. So you can, and the, the screw actually has around 80% of the pull out strength of a pedicle screw. So you can easily put in a 5.5, sometimes even a 6.5 screw. Thank you.